Hey kids, it's the Mist and Fly here, hope you're well. Now you join me on a bit of a dank, horrible day for a test ride of a bike, which is a bit of a shame because this bike is a bit of a beast that I'm on. Today I'm on the Ducati Monster 1200S. Now I rode uh, its baby brother a couple of months back, which was the Monster uh, 979. Or was it the 797? <laughs> and uh, I really enjoyed that bike, and uh, I don't know much about the monsters, as you've just noticed. And uh, a number of people said, well, if you like that bike, which I did, you should really try its big brother, the 1200S. So stick around and stay tuned. I'll give you my uh, first impressions review of the Ducati Monster 1200S. Now, the first thing that uh, strikes you when you jump on the big old monster is the fact that it's got the old classic Ducati twin rumble about it. Bags a character this bike, which is often used as disguise to hide something that people don't like. But actually you buy these monsters because of the character I think. It's a proper old school muscle bike this. And it does rumble around you, it sounds lovely and there are quite a bit of vibes on it. But that's sort of why you buy these, isn't it? Now this bike being the top of the range is laden with uh, Ducati electronics. It's got traction control and ABS, of course. It's got wheelie control. You name it, it's got it. And it's got one of these really clever TFT screens. Which I don't think I've come across on a Ducati before. And this kind of changes its layout depending on what riding mode you're in. Which I quite like. Now I've got this set, this is only going to be a short review as I say, it's my first impressions review. Um, maybe I'll get a chance to do a long term review on one of these later in the summer, but uh, I've got this set on touring mode just for this review because it is raining a little bit, it's a bit damp under tyre and I don't want to unleash all the torque that this baby's got uh, on some of the little twisty country lanes that I'm going to be going on later. So this is basically the, the sort of touring layout of the screen if you like. Really nice and clear though, like the TFT on here. And while we're on the practical things, mirrors, uh, they're okay, they're not vibration free, it has to be said, uh, and also they're quite short these stalks, so I am looking at my shoulder a bit. But they work okay, I can see what's behind me, and let's face it, that's the main thing you want out of a mirror. <laughs> right, it's clear behind. This thing has just got dollops of prodigious torque, and you only have to roll on slightly, and you're into... Uh, big speeds, look at that, 70 miles an hour already and it just feels like the engine is just purring over, barely giving it anything. It's one of those engines that you're very rarely going to stress out. The engine on this uh, Ducati called the Tester Stretter 11 degree and I have to be honest I'm not sure what the 11 degree refers to, it is of course a V-twin. Something to do with timing no doubt, I'll see if I can find out. But it's a lovely big beast. Oh, it's really turning into quite a horrible day today. Bother! So weather protection wise, on this faster road, of course there isn't any, it's a naked bike, so uh, the wind is hitting me square on the chest and the shoulders. It's not a problem though, you get used to it on naked bikes, and if you're doing sensible speeds, I'm doing just under 70 here, you can hold on no problem at all. There's no turbulent blast or anything like that. In fact, in some ways it just helps you to sit upright, it's quite nice. Talking of the seating position, well, I think this is my turn here. Uh, it's got quite a quite a sporty position for a naked. I feel a little bit canted forward. Uh, my feet are well tucked up. Feels like I'm sitting on a racehorse. Of course, this is the thoroughbred. But it's a very comfortable position. You could ride this all day long, no problems at all. It's not um, it's not like a sports bike, of course. Although, as I say, from a legs position, it does feel quite sporty. Let's come over here. Gearbox is lovely and positive on it. Clutch is quite stiff in operation, but that's just a matter of getting used to it. Let's come over this way a bit. Oh, tunnel. Juvenile, but fun. I don't know if you noticed there, but the dash went into night mode. Looks quite smart when it goes inverse. What a lovely sounding Ducati motor that is. And it's got prodigious torque, it just rolls on, it feels like a train when you uh, open up the throttle a bit. 
really nice. Seat on here, quite hard but not uncomfortable and quite dished. So you're sitting right in the middle of it and you don't really have any option to move around. But it is comfy. Oh, sun's coming out, hurrah. But it feels nice and light in the corners. In fact, it just feels nice and light, full stop. It's not one of those bikes that where you sort of set the set the turn it just sits there it's uh, you know it falls into the flickable category considering it's a big old beast it feels much lighter than you'd expect in fact it doesn't feel much different to the uh, the baby monster that I rode in terms of its um, flickability which is a great thing suspension on here is fully adjustable and uh, I'm assuming this bike is just set up as stock as it comes from the factory and it's actually quite nice soft suspension on here but uh, if you wanted to you can adjust that as I say okay let me come to my favorite local uh, walk around spot that's just up here hopefully I'll get out of the way of this vehicle and uh, I'll show you around the bike talk you through the spec in the usual way right let's pop her down here one of my favorite little walk around spots and also a good chance to test the uh, turning circle just here yeah tight actually it's got a really good turning circle on here slow speed control easy peasy nice right that should do us let's find neutral if I can there we go bingo okay here she is then the Ducati Monster 1200S. Nice looking beast. I mean, it does look a bit of a monster, doesn't it? Like that very much. Okie dokie. Let me get my other camera out then, in the usual way. Well, not a lot of the wheels there. And uh, I'll talk you through the spec. Okay, here she is then, the Ducati Monster 1200S. Just open the old visor to get a bit of air in. Now, the S model has some uh, accoutrements that the lesser ones don't have, things like the uh, Odin suspension, for example, on the front. And uh, there's lovely Brembo M50s as well, top spec kit on this machine. All right, let's talk you through the um, through the spec anyway. So here we are, The uh, as I say, the 1200... Uh, engine is actually called a tester stretter 11 degree v-twin uh, it's actually 1198 cc and i don't know why it's called 11 degrees because that looks like a lot more than 11 degrees to me where that v is <laughs> so i assume it's something to do with the timing uh, power wise 147 brake horsepower at 9250 rpm uh, torque 124 newton meters or 91 foot pounds if you're in the old school at 7750 so no lack of power here uh, brakes at the front I already mentioned it's got the Brembo M50s so it's also got two 245 mil discs on the front uh, so prodigious stopping power on the uh, back We've got uh, a Brembo monoblock on a single disc. Let's see if we can see that as well. Uh, can't quite see that. Where's it hiding? Uh, it's there. It's under there, under that single-sided swing arm. Very nice indeed. Uh, Suspension-wise, it's got... Uh, as I mentioned, it's got uh, upside down forks, of course, from Olin's here. Uh, real chunky mothers on this one, really nice. Uh, seat height on here, 795 uh, millimetres to 820, so adjustable. And uh, nice and thin at the front as well. So even if you're a shorty, this bike is going to suit you okay. Weight-wise, it's 213 kilograms wet, or 187 dry. So I suppose that puts that in the lighter category. It's quite a light bike. It certainly fills it. Tank capacity here, big looking tank, holds 16.5 litres of fuel. Um, electronics wise well, I say it's uh, it's laden with electronics for riding modes, um, anti-wheelie, traction control etc etc. Uh, if you're an electronics fan then this bike is for you. LED lights as well of course and the uh, LCD or TFT screen as well. Price wise if you want one of these for the grey it's 15,479 uh, if you want red uh, 15,248 so once again Ducati uh, charge extra for a colour other than red which is odd because he was going to have a Ducati that's not red. Anyway there we go clearly some people do. Um, servicing 9,000 mile service intervals on it um, and that's really all I've got to say on it I think. In terms of uh, competitors I suppose the obvious thing for me that comes to mind would be something like the new Triumph Street, not Street, sorry, the Triumph Speed Triple, gosh, get that right, um, would be a competitor in this sort of muscle naked category. 
Uh, but there we go, yeah, lovely looking bike, I think you'll agree. And I love what they've done with the little red accents on the wheels here as well, it looks really cool. Anyway, there we go, so that's, uh, that is the spec of the Monster 1200S. Let's uh, jump on and ride her some more. So just before I do uh, jump on and ride some more, just having a little look at some of the plumbing and stuff here. I don't know what it is with some Ducatis, but I mean, all this pipe work here, it just looks ugly to my eyes. Uh, on things like, you know, the, I know it's a different sort of bike, but the Triumph Bonnevilles, they've managed to hide all this. And I think Ducati could do some work tidying that up. Similarly on these bikes, um, if I'm trying to look for negatives, is the exhaust. The way all this is folded around here, all very well, but these never look, um, you know, these seem to corrode to my eyes. This isn't corroded yet, it's just um, a slightly different colour, but that's, well, I say that, at the front there's already some signs of rust. I don't know what it is about cat exhaust, but there we go, something I spotted. But this one's laden with bling, as you can see. Beautiful Brembos, lovely Olins, very nice. I mean, for a rider like me, it just rides on the road, it's probably wasted. But uh, if you're a track day fiend, that's going to be a plus point. All right, let's jump on again. All right, it actually feels a lot lighter than it looks, so it's easy to get off the side stand, I'm glad to say. Loving this TFT display on here. It's a nice, uh, nice screen on this one. Saying uh, this particular bike has got an average of 44.1 miles per gallon. Uh, does that sound good? Not really, does it? But you don't buy bikes like this for uh, fuel economy, do you? It certainly sounds lovely. Right, I'm going to do my normal Abingdon test route, which is just down this road here. which is a bumpy as hell, so it's a good test for the suspension. Still a little bit of rain in the air, I hope you can see things okay. Must just take this opportunity, of course, to thank the guys at uh, Blade in here in Abingdon for letting me borrow the bike once again, so I can bring you this first impressions review. If you've not been down to their showroom, it's absolutely packed, not only with Ducatis, but Kawasaki's, Hondas, oops, let's not miss a gear, uh, Harley Davidson's as well. It's a sort of place that would uh, be an excellent destination for a weekend ride out if you've not been. Now one of the things I don't like about the, uh, this particular monster, and indeed some other Ducatis do this as well, including my own, uh, is the way that you select the riding modes on it. To do so, you have to press the indicator switch, and then it brings up um, the various riding modes that you can change here. Now that's all very well, that's, that's easy enough. Um, but I find myself, I've, one of my um, little habits is I'm always pressing the indicator button to make sure I've cancelled the indicator. So of course if you do that, you keep swapping over to this screen every time you cancel the indicator when you don't need to. It's just a little annoyance. I just think it would be much nicer if, oh hello sir, if uh, Ducati came up with a separate button to change the modes or some other way of doing that. Which they have done on some of their other bikes, so it's a shame that uh, that particular bad feature lingers on on the Monster 1200. I have to say, on this really bumpy, horrible road, this suspension is beautiful. As I guess you'd expect for top quality Olin's kit. I'm just going to come around here and test the rear brake. The front, of course, works perfectly with that amazing Brembo M50. Right, nothing behind us. Oh yeah, back brake is actually quite sharp on here. Now, unfortunately, it is a bit of a damp day today, so I'm not going to be able to properly open this up, but let's just... Uh, get past this junction and then roll on a bit. Yeah, my goodness me, she flies. You can feel the front wheel going light when you do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you're a, a wheelie king, turn off the uh, wheelie control and you can have a lot of fun on this. Personally, I'm not a wheelie king. If I'm doing a wheelie, something's gone terribly wrong. lovely through the corners. Yeah, this is definitely a uh, summer Sunday fun bike. Yeah, you can't see it, but I've got a huge grin on my face. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. God, it's so busy around this part of the world. It really does spoil your enjoyment of riding. It's turning off.
quick shifter on here works nicely. Both up and down the box. Ducati seem to have really uh, got those mastered. The quick shifter on my Panigale is lovely as well, albeit that's only up the box. Alright, quick opportunity. No, yeah, maybe not. Very tempted to just squirt by this car then, but thought better of it. Switch gear on here is all nice and simple, pretty obvious what it all does. Uh, it's not, you know, really complicated handlebar setup, which I like. And although this is the sort of PCB type, it's quite positive when you use it, you know, when you actually engage the switch. So, quite like that. Not too sure about these plastic brake reservoirs. I think I would be tempted to uh, swap those out for something a bit more meaty. It's one of those bikes that just feels like it's got endless power. Beautiful. Well, now's a chance. And at no point does it feel like you're putting this engine under any undue stress. It's got a sort of a lazy character about it, which I quite like. All right, better slow down a bit. So there we have it. That's uh, pretty much it for my first impressions review of the uh, Ducati Monster 1200S. A whole set of bikes that really kind of passed me by. I don't know why, and I'm glad I'm getting to know them now. I really enjoyed its baby brother, the 797, or was it the 979? <laughs> Let's check that out. And this is kind of more of the same, but bigger. Uh, it still feels light, still lovely handling. Lots of extra bling on this bike, you know, as I mentioned, the things like the suspension and brakes, top spec, the quick shifter, all the electronics functions you've got. So lots to play with. Uh, it's nice and comfy, goes really well. A uh, little bit of vibrations, of course, through the seat and through the handlebars. We put that down to character. If you like V-twins, then you're going to love this. I think um, the vibration... wait for it. The vibration through the seat might annoy me if I was on a longer journey, but if you're just going to use it for quick flats around the lanes, then it would be absolutely fine and just put it down to character. But yeah, overall, nice bike. Very nice bike. And uh, if you're in the market for a monster, well, a quick, what am I trying to say? If you're, in the, <laughs> if you're in the market for a muscle bike, then definitely check out the big Ducati Monster 1200 in all its variants. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. Okay, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio. white vans. I thought they were missing. Just like buses, you don't see any, and then three come along all at once. Look at that. Brilliant. Oh, four! This is a new record. I'm loving it. Four white vans. Excellent.